Now that we've covered some of the basics of part design, we've looked at weldments, sheet metal parts, and even some molded type parts with draft. Let's talk a little bit about some of the complex tasks that you can do with SOLIDWORKS. Now, I know this series is a basic series, and I know I keep saying that, but I do think it's important that you take a look at some of the more complex sketches and features and things that we can do here so that you have an understanding, even if you're not ready to tackle these designs yet, you have an understanding about where you can go next. To get started, we're gonna create a new sketch and we're gonna use the part millimeter template. Now inside here, I wanna talk for a second about what makes up a complex sketch. Now there are differences between a complex 2D sketch and a complex 3D sketch. I'm not gonna be talking about 3D sketches in this series. They are really used for weldments. Typically when you're making things like splines, you don't do them in 3D because they're a lot harder to control. There's a much easier way to control them. So we're gonna be focusing on complex 2D sketches. And when I say complex, I simply mean that the elements that we're creating, such as a spline or conics or parabolas, are just a little bit harder to define than things like a straight line or a circle. A straight line, you typically have a start point and an end point and maybe an angle in relation to something else, but it's really straightforward to figure out how to define those. People start to have a lot of trouble when you figure out how to do things like create a fully defined spline or figure out how to get the best out of the curvature. So we're gonna create a sketch and we're gonna talk a little bit about splines and some of the do's and don'ts that I like to think about. So let's start a new sketch on the front plane and let's start by going to our spline dropdown and sketching the first option, just called spline. Now, when you start a spline, you have to start by selecting the first point. Now, in this case, we're just gonna place it out in space. I don't really care where it is for now. And then you can either select the last point or you can select one or any certain number of intermediate points. So let's go ahead and just do one middle point and let's do a last point. Now to end the spline tool, I'm gonna to hit escape. So what we have here is essentially some sort of curvature that we have full control over. Now, when we select the spline, you'll notice that we have some things that are grayed out here. Now, I also currently have the control cage displayed. If you right click on the spline, you get a lot of options such as display control polygon, show spline handles, and we also have some options to do things like simplify spline, insert spline point, and so on. I'm gonna turn off display control polygon for now. Now, as we're looking at this, once it's selected, you notice that we have some gray handles here. And we'll talk about those in just a second. I know I mentioned them briefly when we were talking about our sketching early on, but I wanna first start by moving this point around. So you can see that this point is free to move in any direction, up and down, left and right, and we can drastically change the curvature. Now, the handle can also control the direction of curvature coming into and going out of this point. When we select the spline again, you'll notice that I have them at the ends and also in the middle. Now in the middle, you'll notice that it's going both directions because we have curvature coming into this point and curvature going out of this point. Where at the start and end points, we really only have a direction that we're controlling going into the curvature. There's nothing that happens on the other side here. Now, as we look at these handles, they're gray right now, and that means that they're not active. So basically they have not been activated yet. And that means that we can still move things around freely and the spline is gonna take the path of least resistance, or rather it's gonna have the least amount of internal stress. So one thing you'll notice is as I move this point around to the left and right, the handle that's closest to this area gets quite a bit smaller, and the handle over here gets quite a bit larger. As we drag it over here, you can see that quite the opposite's happening. So what this is telling me is that the curvature coming out of this point has a lot more influence on the curvature. Whereas this one here has a lot less, and that really has to do with this proximity to this point here. Now, if we drag this down, you can see that this line gets a little bit longer and this one really gets shorter. We can't even really see it unless we zoom way in. And that's because essentially from this point to this point, it's a straight line and it's a very short segment. But this line over here has a little bit of curvature. Let's drag this point back to the middle and just raise it up a little bit so we have some curvature here. And again, let's select the spline and let's take a look at these end handles. Now, if I click on one of the handles, I've essentially activated it. And that means that it's not only taking the path of least resistance, the internal stresses in the spline, but now I'm controlling that. But you will notice that the other two sets of handles are adjusting based on the curvature that I create. Now, as we look at these handles, there are three sections we need to be concerned with. The point on the end, which lets us change the weight, which is basically how much influence this has, and the direction. If we grab just the arrow, it's gonna allow us to only affect the weight. So it doesn't allow us to affect the direction, but just the weight up and down. 
If we grab this set of arrows, it's only going to allow us to change the direction or the angle. If we do things like add a line, so let's go ahead and just add a vertical line in here. We can take this handle and we can either add a vertical relation to it or we can control select this line and make them collinear. So that takes care of applying a single relation to this line. So we no longer have control over moving this left and right. You'll notice that the end point is black and this set of arrows is black, but we can still control the weight. We can move it up and down, change how much the influence has on it. Now, if we undo that and take a look at other ways that we can apply this, if we select the spline, control select the line, we can apply a tangency between the two. This is essentially giving us the same thing. Now, in this case, a straight line doesn't have any curvature, it's zero curvature, but the tangency relation make sure that the handle is in line or collinear with the vertical line that we've created. All right, so let's take a look at two more things here. I'm gonna draw another line. In this case, it's gonna be a horizontal line. And I'm gonna take this point, and I'm gonna take this line, and I'm gonna add a midpoint relation. So now we have another relation here. We can take this line, control select the spline, and add tangency to it. So this is another way that we can affect the way the control works. Now it's a good idea, let's go ahead and select this line and anchor it. That means it's fixed, and let's anchor its endpoints as well. And let's go ahead and take this line and anchor its endpoints as well. So now as we move this handle up and down, you can see what's sort of free to move around. If we take this left endpoint and fix it, you notice that the spline is now fully defined. We do have control over the weight of this handle, but it really doesn't have any good way for us to adjust the curvature. This point is fixed, it has tangency here, and there's really no control over this handle. Now I can take this handle and I can activate it, and that does give me a little bit more control. And you see that these handles are still inactive, but this is how we can start to fully define our splines and sort of lock them in 2D space in our sketching environment here. So different ways that we can do this is applying relations between points on our spline or the endpoints, controlling their direction, whether it's through tangency, whether it's through the handles giving them a direction like this handle, we could say, make vertical. Now we can still adjust the weight of it. You can see it moves up and down, but we really don't have total control over the spline. Let's go ahead and draw another example next to this. We're gonna use this style spline. Now in SolidWorks 2016, they've added a few more options when you're creating a style spline. Instead of the standard Bezier curve, you can now add a B spline of degree three, five, or seven. And this really adds to the level that you can make for your complex surfaces because it makes a much smoother spline. It gives you lots of control over it. Let's start with a B spline of degree three. Now I'm just gonna place a point down here. I'm gonna place a point over here. And then I need to place one more point and I can hit escape. So you can see what we have here is now this sort of control polygon. But what we don't have is anything in the middle of the spline. So that means we no longer have the ability to constrain a midpoint on our spline to something like this line and make it tangent. You might be thinking to yourself, why is that really important? Do I really care about that? Well, when you start to make 2D sketches on multiple planes and you need to constrain these curves to each other, it can become tricky when you can't actually constrain to the spline itself. You have to sort of break things up in smaller chunks. That's okay, it's really just a different way of doing things. But as we're taking a look at this, what I wanna do is actually select the spline and show the curvature. Now curvature combs are very handy when you're controlling your spline. When you first turn on curvature combs, you can adjust the scale and you can adjust the density. Now if we make much smaller, in this case the density of 45, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on here. But once we say okay, by default, and I'm not sure why SolidWorks did this, but by default, that color is yellow and it's very hard to see. If you select the spline, you can see it's orange, but when it's deselected, it's yellow and it's nearly impossible to get an idea unless you make your background a darker color. So let's go ahead and adjust that. We're gonna go up into our system options. We're gonna go down to colors. And inside here, I'm gonna scroll down until we see temporary graphics shaded. And this is the color that's defining what the curvature comb looks like. And again, by default, it's yellow and I have no clue why. Really what you wanna do is you wanna come in and make it something darker whether it's a blue or red or even black, but just make it a darker color. So that way when you're displaying it on the screen, it's a lot easier to see. Now, one thing I should mention when we're talking about these splines is if we hop out of here and the sketch is visible, you're gonna see those curvature combs. And that's where the downside of having them blue or something darker would be. But 
When you're done with them, if you simply edit the sketch, if you're happy with the curvature, let's just adjust this and watch the curvature combs change a bit. So if you're happy with the curvature, you can select your spline and you can turn them off. So I typically will turn them on when I'm adjusting the spline control, when I'm trying to get my curvature nice and smooth. And when I'm done, I'll turn it off so I don't have to worry about it being visible in the sketch after I hop out back into the modeling environment. So when we talk about these complex sketches, we're gonna have to start creating relations between them. So you have to decide early on whether or not you wanna use something like a spline with internal points, or if you wanna use a style spline, maybe a B spline with a degree three, and figure out what the option is for you. I wanna take a look at one more thing before we end this video. Let's go ahead and do one more sketch on the front plane. And under the ellipse dropdown, we're gonna take a look at conics. Now, conics are pretty interesting. Most of the time, they're not gonna be used, but it is a great option in some cases. You create them by selecting the starting point, the ending point, you're gonna create an inflection point way out here in space, and then you're gonna determine what the row value of this is. Now, if you wanna think about a conic in terms of 3D, Think about a revolved solid cone, and then you have a plane that you're slicing it at an angle. So pretty much what we're taking is a cone in 3D. So if we were to revolve this, we would then be taking a section of this from this point up into some area. So as we get closer and closer between these two points, we get closer to the point of our pyramid, of our cone. As we get farther away, as the row value drops, we get farther and farther away. So we get more of an actual arc. So as I pull this point around, you notice that things sort of float around in space. These conics can be a little bit hard to define inside of your sketching environment if you don't have fixed relations at some of the endpoints, if you're not really linking them to other geometry. But if you select it and you select parameters, down in the parameter section, you have some things that help control it. Now, you have the standard X, Y, and Z locations, and keep in mind that these are not locking the geometry to anything. They're simply a way for you to manipulate it on the screen. But inside here, you do have control over the row value. For instance, we can take it to something smaller, or we can take it up to its max, 0.95. And you have control over the radius of curvature. Let's say that we wanted to make it a 0.5 row value, and then we can modify the radius of curvature. And again, notice as I change this, it modifies my row value as well. Because again, it's not linking these values. You can, of course, come in here and you can dimension this thing. So you're dimensioning the row value, let's say that we wanted to lock it in at 0.55. Then we could come in here and look at our parameters and try to manipulate things and adjust things like the radius value. But notice that as I do that, again, it's affecting that row value. So the parameters are really a good way for you to get close to what you want. But when you wanna lock this thing in, you really need to determine what the overall dimensions are that you're gonna do. In this case, we're not really using a conic. I'm just sort of showing it to you as an example. but it's a good idea to have a good understanding of a conic when you wanna use it. In most cases, your style spline and your standard spline are gonna be what you're gonna use as your go-to when you're creating curvature in 3D.